Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Adventures in Brain Injury podcast. My name is Kevin Ballister. I'm a severe traumatic brain injury survivor, author of How to Feed a Brain, creator of Adventures in Brain Injury, and feedabrain.com, and host of the Adventures in Brain Injury podcast. And I am so excited to introduce you guys to Jody Cohen. Hi, Jody. How are you? Good. Nice to see you guys. Yes. So let me tell you a little bit about about Jody. So Jody, um, she is a best-selling author, award-winning journalist, a functional practitioner, and founder of Vibrant Blue Oils which makes really high quality essential oils. Um, She has helped over 50,000 clients heal from brain related challenges, including anxiety, insomnia, and autoimmunity. Um, Using her combined training as in nutritional therapy and in aromatherapy. And aromatherapy can get like this woo woo rap and that's not the case. There are cranial nerves that connect all of this and science is showing all of it and aromatherapy is fantastic. So I'm really excited to have her on the podcast to talk about ways to use essential oils for, for brain health. Um, I also wanted to let you know that she recently published Essential Oils to Boost the Brain and Heal the Body, which is available on Amazon. And you guys can check it out at feedabrain.com forward slash boost. So, Jody, hello and welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I guess we're, we're both in our vehicles <laughs> and uh, I know well, you got this, this was a pivot day you know unexpected uh things popped up so that mm-hmm. that's actually what I want to talk about oils for I think they're really great when um stress hits you sideways and you're not anticipating it I like it the pivot days yeah I'm actually traveling I'm on the road on on my own adventures and uh and this is currently my office so uh where, where are you today? Right now I'm in Eugene, Oregon. Oh, you're close. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you? I'm in Seattle. Okay. Um, yep. Actually driving on I-5 at the moment. Bam. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good. Good, good. Well, um, Jody, let's let's start with the with the the the, the quintessential question which is how are essential oils uniquely suited to support and to heal the brain one of the challenges with any uh getting any remedy into the brain is that the blood brain barrier only lets super small fat soluble molecules through this is one reason that chemo can't be done in the brain. The molecules are too big. And another reason why essential fatty acids like omega-3s are known to be so good for the brain because they actually get into the brain, you know, and help to turn off this is what CBD oil does too. Essential oils are so small and fat soluble that they can actually cross the blood brain barrier and get the healing remedy into the brain, you know, and they're also comprised of plants and plants are the precursors to do so many pharmaceutical drugs. I think over 50% of the pharmaceutical drugs that were authorized in the last 50 years are, are derived from plants. So it's just a different uh, way to kind of access remedies. Absolutely true. It's not something that goes directly to the brain. Kind of, kind of had a little glitch, but I think we're all right. Um, so, so yeah, absolutely. And when we're talking about cranial nerves, you know, you have twelve cranial nerves, which are like super highways that bring information in and out of the brain. And the first cranial nerve is the olfactory nerve, and is the only cranial nerve that goes directly to the cortex. So we're 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 affecting neurological change. Um, very quickly and fat soluble and um, and bypasses the blood brain barrier so 
So, you know, you were talking about how today's kind of a pivot day and um, and there a lot of anxiety can come on from that, a lot of stress, um, a lot of things that can bump us into sympathetic, sympathetic dominance, which is the fight or flight response. And so I want to um, first, could you talk about sympathetic, parasympathetic, and um, how essential oils can shift us into more of a parasympathetic mode where we can rest and digest? Yeah, so for anyone who is not familiar with those concepts, the, nerve, the operating system for your body is your autonomic nervous system. It controls all of your automatic functions, your heart rate, your breathing, your ability to digest food, detoxify waste, turn on immune functions, support inflammation, um, and it has different speeds, kind of like we're in the car right now. You can go faster or you can go slower. And when the body thinks it's in danger, either because a wild animal is chasing you or, you know, someone's changing lanes and maybe doesn't see you, or you have anticipatory thought-driven stress, like fear of financial situations, your health, you know, the, what's going on in the world, um, relationships. All of those things stimulate the body to think it's in danger. And that's when the sympathetic branch of the nervous system, the fight or fight branch, bleh, branch kicks into gear and it allocates resources differently. You know, it makes sure that you have enough blood flow to your arms and your legs to flee. It increases your respiratory rate. So you have enough fuel in the form of oxygen. It releases stress hormones like cortisol so that you have the energy to focus and it prioritizes survival and downregulates everything that's not relevant to immediate survival. So um, your ability to digest your food, to detoxify, to anti-inflame, to turn on immune function. All of those occur in the parasympathetic state of the nervous system. And what's really cool is that your vagus nerve, cranial nerve number 10, is really the on-off switch between these two branches of the nervous system. It helps you shift from sympathetic fight or flight to parasympathetic rest and digest. And so one of the great things that I really talk about in this book is this idea that you, um, you can't necessarily change your external circumstances. You know, we don't get to decide um, what's happening with other leaders and in the world, but we get to change our response. And the best way to do that is to activate the parasympathetic nervous system. And um, just quick anatomy lesson, it starts at the base of the head, um, divides and winds around both sides behind the earlobe. If you feel behind the earlobe, you'll feel a bone. That is your mastoid bone. That is where your vagus nerve is most accessible to the surface. And in any kind of head injury, it's not uncommon for the vagus nerve to um, incur a little bit of damage, which can impair its ability to signal and that can correlate to a lot of uh, TBI symptoms. So the more you stimulate it back into parasympathetic, it's like working a muscle, the more um, you build that strength. And uh, Tatis Karazian, who's one of my favorite practitioners, used to talk about, you know, gagging yourself with a tongue depressor, um, gargling, all of these things that, you know, were not necessarily pleasant experiences. So compliance was often very low. But it's interesting, right around 2012, when I was starting my company, there was a New York neuroscientist who was uh, surgically implanting electrical devices, pacemaker-like devices behind the earlobe on that mastoid bone area. And he was having tremendous success, so much so that the FDA has approved this technology for epilepsy, migraines, and depression. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, that's really interesting. There are stimulatory oils that you can topically apply on that area behind the earlobe on the mastoid bone that will stimulate a similar kind of stimulatory response, activate the vagus nerve, turn on the parasympathetic state. And so that's, what, that's one of the strategies that I share in the book is how you can basically use essential oils to reset your nervous system. I'm sorry, we're home now. <laughs> no, I, I, I understand. We, maybe, maybe we should we should pause. Let you uh, let you get home. You oh know, yeah, do up, wanna, up um, to you want to? No, I, I I can I can hop in the house and continue. I'm good. Cool. You're live, right? Yeah, we are live. 
So oh, yeah, no, no, we're we're good. Everyone can see it's actually a sunny day in Seattle, which is an anomaly. So you guys get to see it at its prettiest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so first off, uh, Dr. Dante Scrozin, he wrote the forward to my Bro. book. Uh, he's an amazing Sorry. mentor of mine. And Dr. Dante Scrozin, his he talks a lot about simulating the vagal, vagus nerve. But yeah, like you said, compliance with gagging yourself and gargling water is not, not as high. Um, putting essential oil... Yeah right there right so it's right behind the mastoid bone um, exactly yeah actually yeah. can affect that and uh so so what are some of the essential oils that you recommend for that area well that's i share the exact recipe in my book but it's a combination of clove and lime so uh -huh. You know, stimulatory means that if you apply it on your skin, it might make the skin a little red, it might feel a little hot on the skin. And um, oil blending is kind of chemistry, right? So some molecules are huh? tools in clove, um, if just in isolation would take about like 20 minutes to get through the skin. Lime is significantly smaller. So when you combine them, clove and lime, you get this super stimulatory blend that gets through the skin immediately. And then if you layer in a carrier oil, like a fractionated coconut oil, that's really thin, it get, it's almost like an acupuncture needle. Mm -hmm. It just goes through the skin that quickly, stimulates the vagus nerve, shifts you into parasympathetic state. It's literally like a gear shift on a bike. Nice. nice. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing. So what are some of your favorite research findings on essential oils? Yeah, there's a lot of research that kind of looks at the sense of smell. And, you know, historically, our sense of smell has kept us alive because we can smell food, we can smell water, we can smell predator odor. So there is a, a Nobel laureate named Linda Buck is actually also located in Seattle, who started identifying specific olfactory receptors that were um, pretty specific to a predatory odor. And then she took it one step further and she looked at, wait, what cancels out that predatory odor fear response? And it was rose. So that whole adage, stop and smell the roses, it really does calm fear almost immediately. Wow. I know, Stop right? Smell the roses. Yeah. Like if you're having that, a hard really day. Cool. Yeah, it's really good. And I've noticed that too. Like rose, uh, it has a number of benefits, but for anyone that might be prone to uh, waves of grief, rose, just smelling rose or topically applying over the heart, it really um, helps you kind of move through things more quickly so that you're not um, overwhelmed and, and, uh, uh, you know, grief can almost be hard to breathe through. Like it, it's, it's paralyzing and Rose can really shift you out of that paralysis very quickly. So I started this conversation kind of diving into essential oils and ways that we can use them and some tools. But I wanna, I wanna back up a little bit and, and okay. ask you about your background and what brought you into um, yeah. all of your work, you know, um, about, about, doing this work and then what brought you specifically towards essential oils? Yeah, I think um, necessity is the mother of all inventions. So uh, I had been moderately healthy. You know, I was an athlete, so I, I ate pretty well, but I also worked at Microsoft. So I pretty much free-based Diet Coke. And, you know, when I was pregnant with my first one, I lost my taste for Diet Coke and I was slowly kind of working towards health. But uh, my first child was super easy. My second child was not. And I was reading every parenting book, trying to figure out how to, um, you know, help him focus and, and be more calm and more mindful, all the prefrontal cortex things. And we were uh, out with a bunch of other families. He was being really well behaved. My friend complimented me. And then he ate something and Jekyll hide it and took off running in a different direction. And after I had kind of, um, you know, brought him back, she said, oh, you know, I never saw him do that after eating something. Maybe, maybe food changes, you know, his brain. My brother was on Ritalin his whole life and it turned out he was just allergic to weird foods. You should check that out. And I thought, 
I can do that. I've done everything else. So we took him to a nutritional therapist who basically confirmed that yes, when he's exposed to neon food, his um, the excitotoxins are a little much for his brain. And uh, he was also really sensitive to corn, soy, and dairy. So we changed his diet and his whole personality changed. And I thought that is really crazy because I, you know, it's really hard when um, parents can be really mean and really critical. And when your kid isn't kind of behaving the way they want your kid to behave, it can make you feel really bad about yourself. And I thought, wow, I I wish I had known this. Like, I wish someone had told me this earlier because it would have saved me a lot of agony. Uh, So I went back and got a degree in nutritional therapy and was trying to help other parents, you know, but kids are squirmy and wiggly and it's not like they're lying on the table and letting you assess them. So as a shortcut, I learned this technique called muscle testing that really is, um, talk about the 80-20 rule. It just really efficiently lets you ascertain what's the health priority and what's the best way to kind of balance that out. And so that came in handy uh, for my next rock bottom, which was um, my, my then husband was severely depressed and it became clear that he might die on my watch. So we moved him into a residential treatment facility. And once I knew he was safe and it wasn't my job to keep him safe, I literally collapsed and uh, could barely function, but the kids were five and seven. I had a full-time job. I had to do something. I was ingesting all the right remedies. Nothing was working. And I was very lucky that a good friend of mine uh, noticed like, oh, you've been so high stress, so high cortisol for so long. Uh, I bet that that means high inflammation and your gut is just toast. So nothing you're ingesting is actually being assimilated. So why don't we try oils? You know, they can go through your skin immediately. If you smell them, they can go straight to the brain. Uh, Just give it a try. And she gifted me a bunch of oils and I thought, okay, you know, I can try that. Why not? So I muscle tested them for the adrenals and uh, got a strong yes that they could support my adrenals and then got um, five different oils, which really surprised me because normally I would get like one remedy, maybe two. And I kept retesting and I kept getting the same five. And then it occurred to me, oh, wait, they're liquid. I can combine them. So I made my first blend, just muscle testing, you know, three drops of this one, five of this one, put it on my adrenals, on my low back and felt like myself. It was, it was really like, a you know, reboot to factory settings reset. And I thought that's great. You know, so I just kept playing with oils, making up blends. And when I started feeling better. My friends wanted to know what I was doing. They wanted samples. It helped them. It helped their clients. And they started saying, you should do something with this. And I thought, well, gosh, I'm I'm sure this has been done. Like this seems pretty obvious. So I finally went online and looked at what was being done and realized that, uh, first of all, no one was really looking at um, oils to balance regions of the brain and organ systems. And the way oils were being presented felt very complicated. So I was almost grateful that I hadn't started by looking online because I would have felt completely unqualified and probably not done it. So that's how it got started. Mm. So what you so you said you, you would have felt unqualified by looking online. Well, I think that there's this is actually one of the key reasons that I wrote. Oh, I can show you the book that I wrote the book, Essential Oils to Boost the Brain and Heal the Body. I think that oils are presented, you kind of mentioned that they're dismissed as airy-fairy. I think they're also, um, there's a certain way that they're presented that I, it has been, I mean, it's not wrong, nothing is wrong, but my personal experience and clinical experience has been a little bit more expansive than that. And so I just want people, I feel like it's a really accessible remedy you know, to kind of get into the brain, to help balance different regions of the brain, to support obviously diet and other lifestyle choices. And I just wanted people, I wanted it to feel accessible and to empower people to know like, oh, you don't need to have a degree in aromatherapy. You know, you don't need to um, know what all these plants do. You, You can just, here's an easy way to start, you know, and if you like it, then you can do more. But I just, I just wanted to kind of open up the potential to more people. You just said my favorite word, empowering. That's, yeah. That's what, that's what I'm all about. That's what 
that's what all my work is about. It's about empowering people to be in control of their own health and their own, their own healing, you know, and when it comes to your book and, and, you know, my book, I was writing the, the, the book I wish I had throughout my journey. That's and exactly, that's exactly what I did. Exactly the same thing. And, um, yeah. and it's, it's making it extremely accessible because where were you when you needed that information, you know? Yeah. And, and it's, it's so important to have that accessibility piece and thank you for empowering people with this because it's so true. You can go, you can buy essential oils yeah. um, either from you or from your health food store or whatever. Yeah. I, and, and that's another thing. People, people are so afraid that, the, you know what, anyone who's grown like lavender, peppermint, basil in their yard, uh, it grows pretty rapidly. You don't need to be so worried that it's, you know, going to be uh, falsely created. Um you know, just try to buy organic. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's incredibly empowering. And th there's another trick that there are a couple of things that I just want to share. Cause you know, especially when, um, we're, so many people are feeling isolated. So many people are at home. They're, they're just, they're super small. They're easy to use and you don't need crazy amounts of training. Yeah. You, you know, you can, uh, try, you know, like my, my favorite technique actually, um, is for anyone who suffers from anxiety or anxiety attacks, our colleague Titus Chu, who's a functional neurologist, and that's a whole branch of chiropractic mm -hmm. that's dedicated to balancing regions of the brain. So what he said, the different hemispheres of your brain do different things. And the frontal lobe kind of helps um, as an inhibitor and a check and, and helps you modulate your anxiety. You know, your amygdala uh, responds to everything, everything's a danger it checks and balances with the prefrontal cortex. You're walking, you think you see a snake, you jump back, if that's your amygdala, your prefrontal cortex checks in and says, no, it's a stick, you're okay. And so the more you can bring your prefrontal cortex online, which as you mentioned, smelling anything that stimulates it, that brings it more online. But if you're feeling anxious, it often means that your right prefrontal cortex is overactive. And the way to balance that and calm the anxiety is to stimulate the left prefrontal, prefrontal cortex. The easiest way to do that is to smell anything through your left nostril, anything you like. It can be lavender, orange, mint, whatever makes you happy. But just three to seven breaths stimulates the left hemisphere, balances the two hemispheres. You, you know, I'm, I am a poster child for anxiety. I know that this kills an anxiety attack in instance. And it also, you know, stresses are additive and cumulative. Healing is additive and cumulative. The more you do it, the less likely you are to be anxious. Mm. So you're, you're smelling anything through your left nostril. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. Three to seven, three, to seven breaths with that. Yep. And I really liked how you said, you know, you can use, um, you can use, you can pick up different oils and use them. Yeah. You know, my, my, my girlfriend actually has an allergy to coconut oil, um, but she combines oils and then uses a different carrier yeah. and, um, and, and delivers it that way. And um, the, the power of essential oils is amazing seeing what, what can be done with them. So yeah, absolutely. Oh, and I also wanted to say Dr. Titus Chu, we interviewed him He's uh, great. A while ago, uh, probably, probably a year, year and a half, maybe even two years ago. Uh, but Dr. Titus Chu is, is amazing. Um, so, so I'll, I'll link that in the description. As oh yeah, well. please do. He's, he's great. It's really fun actually to play with functional neurology and start mm -hmm. looking at, you know, how can you, it's pretty amazing and it's exciting that they use um, essential oils along with eye tracking. I mean, there are so many ways, back to your point on empowering, how wherever you are now, you can always feel better. Like you don't need to just say like, oh, this is just getting old. No, you, you can be, um, you know, as, as flexible, as energized, as focused as you want to. Thank you for saying that. The, the, I, I think that's such a cop out, you know, oh, it's, that's what happens when you get older. Like, yeah. You know, 
Mm -mm. There are there are so many tools that that we can use, and I'm not talking about uh, tools as far as pharmaceutical drugs go. I'm talking about natural tools that are that are more connected with who we are evolutionarily and who we are being um, human organisms and what we have evolved with for, 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 you know, hundreds of thousands of years. So um, what, what we're talking about is plants. And one thing that has been said is like, uh, there's like an argument around like paleo and, um, and whether essential oils are truly paleo, because we're basically concentrating a whole lot into a little container. Um, what? How, how do you respond to something like that? Hmm. Well, I, I, I mean, I guess it depends on how you define paleo. If you're saying like, what did our ancestors eat? We know our ancestors used essential oils. We found the remnants of them. Hmm. Um, you know, and I think right, the biggest Frankincense, difference- myrrh. Yeah. Uh, embalming. Uh, we yeah. use embalm in, in essential oils, right? This is not new news. You know, when uh, we landed on Plymouth Rock and started asking the Native Americans, like white willow bark is aspirin, valerian root is valium. Like plants were concentrated throughout time. It's really not hard to distill oils. It's basically boiling water and capturing the steam and capturing the oils. They knew how to do this back then. And I would say there probably is not a more paleo remedy than the concentrated essence of plants. Um, and what's interesting that you also brought up that I wanted to address, I find that when you're able to address the root cause, the symptoms fall away. I think that a lot of drugs are designed to kind of uh, alleviate symptoms, but that, that was my other big motivation for um, this book, you know, I was finding uh, uh, people, my, everyone has their own unique story, right? A lot of different data points, but at the root of health imbalances, there are really five things that kept coming up. Uh, poor sleep, being stuck in sympathetic, uh, poor drainage, meaning that the garbage isn't leaving the body. And so then the immune system is responding to these toxins with inflammation. And that lies at the root of systemic inflammation. So the more you can help, um, the lymph flow, the liver work, you know, the gallbladder be supportive, the toxins actually leave the body, the more you lessen the burden on the immune system and the more that calms inflammation. Uh, energy is a big one, both mental and physical, and then um, immune modulation and inflammation. So those were kind of the five keys that I kept seeing over and over again as root causes for everyone's health story. And I started noticing that the more you um, calmed that, the more you got people who were suffering from insomnia to sleep, the more you allowed people to drop into the parasympathetic branch of their nervous system so that healing could actually occur, the more you modulated the immune system so it wasn't underreacting and overreacting, the more they healed. You just kind of took out the problems that were stopping them from healing so that the body returned to balance. And those five things lend themselves incredibly well to essential oils. So that was really my goal to empower people, you know, to help them understand what oils are, why they work, both with clinical uh, pearls and also research to back it up to kind of identify these five imbalances that are so common so that people feel empowered so that they understand, oh gosh, the fact that I'm not sleeping, maybe I should put more energy into fixing that because look at the consequences you know, and then empowering them with the tools. You know, we sell ready-made versions of the blends if people want that. If they already love oils, have oils, want to make their own, we give all the recipes. I just really wanted to meet people where they were at and give them some strategies to take the next step. Beautiful. I really like <laughs> how you talked about sympathetic and parasympathetic. Um, parasympathetic being a place to heal. I mean, the, the tagline, lines form are um for for sympathetic it's fight or flight which takes energy that's that like you need to run or fight like that's a lot of energy yeah. um rest and digest is just the opposite it's it's healing it's it's restoring it's 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 resting you know yeah um and i think that those are really great distinctions also 
with digestion um being being part of that parasympathetic um allows us to create bile which is what breaks down the uh the the fats that we eat so um something that you brought is very paleo (laughs) very very paleo very ketogenic and and very much for brain health you know i talk a lot about about ketogenic metabolism and how it's supportive to brain health but i think something i learned from you um or a reminder I got from you is is that we don't create bile and bile is what emulsifies the fat that we ingest and emulsification is what needs to happen for us to effectively absorb and utilize the oils that we ingest. So, um, so yeah, thank you for that first off. And um, do you want to speak any more into that? Oh my God. The gallbladder is like the most underrated organ. I can't even believe it. And so many people have their gallbladder removed and are just told like easy breezy, nothing. And then they're like gaining weight. All of their hormones are going all over the place. It's really um, bananas. So the liver uh, creates bile, makes bile, and then it's stored and concentrated in the gallbladder. And what's supposed to happen is in response to fat in the diet, the gallbladder releases the bile, which then helps emulsify the fat. The bile is also kind of the carrier agent. So the liver processes the toxins, right? And then carries it through the bile duct into the gallbladder. And when you release the bile, you're releasing the toxins. So if you're not releasing bile, you're reabsorbing your toxins. So think of uh, in Greek, Greek mythology, Sisyphus, right? He pushes the rock up the hill, it rolls back down. He pushes it up again. Your liver performs 500 functions, including cleaning out the garbage, you're processing all the toxins and excreting them from the body. If it's processing toxins and they don't leave the body, that means it gets all of the work that it completed yesterday to redo plus new work and it exhausts itself more quickly. And that impacts everything, not just toxicity and detoxification, but blood sugar, everything you've got going on in your body. So the more you can support your gallbladder, support that bile actually uh, flows more like water than molasses and leaves the body, the healthier you are. So the more you can activate your vagus nerve, I actually have a free gift, um, boostthebrainbook.com slash gift. It's 25 strategies to activate the vagus nerve. So not including oils. And it kind of does a deep dive on why all of them work. But then the gallbladder, most people don't know. If you have motion sickness, that's gallbladder. If you have a mild headache above your forehead, gallbladder. Pain between your shoulder blades, gallbladder. When you have um, morning sickness, when you're pregnant, that's your gallbladder. You're vomiting out the toxins so it doesn't cross through the placenta to the baby. There are all these subtle symptoms that no one talks about. But the more you can support the gallbladder, the more you support your ability to detoxify, the more you support your hormonal health, you know, brain health, it, um, it's correlated with melatonin and kind of cleaning the brain out at night. So it's, it's a fabulous organ. That's a really good, uh, that's a really good thing for us to, to keep in mind. You know, I, I know that many gastroenterologists just take out anytime they go in oh, there, they take the gallbladder out and it's, it's, it's unfortunate. It's considered um, an optional organ, but I, I don't think it's optional. I think it's pretty important. But but if if you're listening and you've lost your gallbladder, I actually did a really deep dive. I have it was a 12 page uh, blog post that I, I wrote on if your gallbladder is removed, here's how you you know don't worry, you're you're still going to be fine. These are just things that you can proactively do to ensure that you stay healthy. Nice. Where can people find that? Um, vibrantblueoils.com backslash blog and just put in the search bar of gallbladder. Yeah, I was gallbladder. shocked. There are actually two women on my team that have their gallbladders out there. They're mm. like, no one told us this. And at first yeah. I was like, this must be out there. And again, found nothing. So I'm like, all right, I guess I'm writing this. Good. Well, I'm glad yeah. you did. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's it's so important. Well, great. Um, where can people find out more about you, Jody? Well, they can definitely go to boostthebrainbook.com slash mm-hmm. gift or vibrantblueoils.com. And if anything we talked about triggers more questions, just shoot us an email at info at vibrantblueoils.com. And uh, you can get the first chapter 
at yeah. feedofbrain.com forward slash boost. You can download the first chapter of the book. And um, and yeah, like what what you're doing is really important. I really appreciate how you're empowering people and uh, and helping, you know, uh, you know, whether you have a brain injury or anxiety or whatever, or just looking to optimize and improve your health. Essential oils are really an amazing, easy pocket size, um, non-invasive yeah. uh, thing that you can carry with you. That's a fantastic tool. Yes. Thank you so much for your Thank time. You. Thank you for your time, Jody. I really appreciate you. And uh, for everybody out there, thank you for joining us. And um, thank you for being here on the Adventures in Brain Injury podcast. If you uh, could leave a review, head over to iTunes or feedabrain.com forward slash iTunes. We'll take you right there. Leave a review. and. Um, Thank you so much. Thanks again, Jody. Thank and, you. All right. We'll see y'all next time. Someone take me to a doctor.